Hello, this is Eli from Typewriter Minutes. As Thanksgiving approaches, we at Typewriter Minutes thought we would make a list of the things we have to be thankful for. This is Sam, and I'm thankful for the Constitution of the United States of America. This is Aileen, and I'm thankful for God. This is Jonah, and I'm thankful for family and Thanksgiving football. This is Eli again, and I'm thankful for Thanksgiving desserts. This is Scott, and I'm thankful for JJ Short and Associates. Thankful to JJ Short. We have a brand new platen in my 1945 or 46 Smith Corner Silent. We got together with a buddy and we sent in a batch of platens that had the same diameter from Smith Coronas. Had Sam's 1956 Smith Corona included, so he's got a nice new platen in there. And it really does make a world of difference as far as the, the noise that it makes. I have like a torpedo 18B. It just sounds like I'm typing with a machine gun. It's so loud because the platen is just rock hard. And you'll see uh, or I'll th I think you'll hear during the typing test what, uh, how quiet it is when it types. So we'll do a quick spin around of the body. This was a Craigslist find here locally. And it has a few nicks down here on the front because of the way they had it in the case. But otherwise it's in really nice shape. I love the black on black stripes of this model. I think it's one of the, one of the best looking typewriters out there. And we'll show some of the differences as we go along between this and the, the later 1956 model. Substantially the same machine with uh, a few differences. We didn't give this one the full chemical clean when we got it because it wasn't that bad. And I was that anxious to just start using it. So uh, it's still fairly clean, really great typer. And uh, I'm thankful for this typewriter as well. Differences you'll find between the newer model and the older model is the keys. So the keys on the 45, 46 Smith Corona are chrome rimmed and a little bit flatter on top. And by the way, I say 45, 46 because I'm not clear from the database which it is. So I think we'll just call it a 46. Um, the keys are flatter on top. They have a chrome rim which gives it kind of a really classic look. I think make this model really popular and the 56 model on the newer model it has ergonomic keys designed for comfort so the keys dip a little bit on the inside you can feel a little bit of a difference when you're typing and these seem to be spaced apart just a little bit more than these so if you were to just start typing on both of these machines this one right away feels a little bit easier to type on, I think, but once you get used to it, the, uh, the flatter keys feel perfectly fine as well. The other difference we notice is that the keys on the older model, they spell out floating shift, shift lock, backspace, and uh, margin release. But on this one, it's either not there, just a picture, or abbreviated. Over here we have the ribbon reverse lever, the ribbon color selector, tab. And on the 46 model, it does not have a key set tabulator. So if you want to set the tabs, you have to go to the back of the machine. And he has these little pins that you could just pull off. And it's marked on here, the scale. So if you want to put it at 10 spaces, they just slide. Oop just slide right in and then when you hit tab it goes to your preset tabs over here it's a lot simpler just press some buttons and you've got some set tabs so you got tab set tab clear under the hood it looks like a standard Smith Corona that you've seen probably in all our other videos it's got the basket shift which they call the floating shift. It has a little touch control lever here. This one has the original metal spools. And there's the floating shift mark again. 
And that's pretty much what we have on the 56 as well. So they're um, almost identical on the insides. Up here, we have little sliding paper fingers, one on the left, one on the right, and the paper bale as well, uh, the three rollers. This one actually just goes one way versus the paper bale on the Smith Corona 56, which goes up and out. So this one's a little bit more flexible than the paper bale on the older one. Um, over here, we have the carriage release lever, the paper release lever if you want to scooch the paper in straight after you got it in. And I think that's it for this side. Does not have the quick release platen like the 1960s machines have. Oh, and don't forget the platen knob. Oh, yeah, the platen knob. So it's a little bit more working getting the platens out than on the Galaxy style Smith Coronas. On the back, again, we have the preset tab uh, little knobby thingies that you can move around. Here we have the pop-up paper supports, one on each side. It's a little bit different looking than the one on the 56, which is, what do we call them? Bunny ears. Bunny ears. This one has more like antennas. Yep. And then back around to this side, oh, here's the uh, margin slides. They look a little bit different than on the tan 56 model. The buttons are different, but the mechanism is the same. You just push and slide. Over to this side. Platen knob, carriage release lever. This is the, uh, you pull that out so that you can get to an exact place on the form that releases the clicks. And then over here, it's not marked as well as on the 56 model, but you have the uh, line spacing for single space and double space. And you'll notice that there's no page gauge on the 46 model. So at some point between 46 and 56, they figured out, oh, there it is, the page gauge. You can watch the video review of the 56 models, see how that works. Okay, a quick correction. I lied a minute ago when I said that these don't have the quick release uh, platens on them. I had forgotten that on the 56, there is a, a lever there that you can push and the platen comes right out. And I didn't realize it until just now, but the 46 has this lever which pulls back and it does allow the platen to come right out. So I didn't realize that we had that on the 46. Learn something new every day. On this side we have the carriage return lever, as usual. And then back over here there's the little carriage centering lever, so when you're ready to put it in the case. Push that knob down, oops, push that down, and it stops halfway so that it's centered when you put it in the case. A couple quick notes before we do the typing test. So I forgot to mention this earlier, but under the hood, in addition to the manual or ribbon reverse lever, it does have the, the forks. So you want to put eyelets on the ribbon so that when it gets to the end of the ribbon spool, the eyelet comes out hits the fork and triggers the ribbon reverse mechanism. Uh, another thing to be careful of when you open the hood is that you have to make sure the carriage is far enough this way. You'll see that it's been opened a couple times when this is here and the ribbon cover can hit that chrome. So you gotta make sure to move it all the way over before you lift up the hood. And then finally we'll Take a quick look, oh, put these down first, and then just a quick look under the machine. Looks like very, very, very familiar sight from all our other Smith Corona videos, and I'm thankful that the rubber feet on this are still in good shape. Pardon the dust, we haven't cleaned this one in a while. Before we move on to the typing test, here's a quick look at the case. So you'll see in the background there, that's the holiday case for Sam's 56. Um, and this one is completely different. So it's uh, wood and it's got this black covering on it. And 
something you'll notice about these types of cases is they usually smell musty. This one's in good shape. Structurally, it's perfect. It has a few uh, areas on the corners where this covering material has come off. Otherwise, it's completely sound, but it does smell just a bit. We did what we could when we got it to get the musty smell out, but that's one of the benefits of the uh, holiday case is that it's all metal or aluminum and it doesn't get those smells. It's got this nice kind of, I don't know, satiny looking material there in the back. Has some little built-in rubber bumpers on the back that the typewriter sits on. And then the case latch right there fits in the slot on the back of the machine. And then I don't know if these were originally with the case or not. If, if not, they're in there. Somebody put them in to help support the typewriter. So it's a, it's a nice case if you don't mind the musty smell. Now for a typing test. So I forgot to mention here's the little paper slide on the left. And let's put the paper supports up. Put the paper in. The feed rollers on this didn't need to be replaced because they were in good shape. First, on the black setting, and we have not really tuned up this machine. There's a little bit of black on the red, so I'll have to tinker with that. Otherwise, the letters are nice and crisp. And I don't know if it's, if you could tell from the video, but the platen really does reduce the noise uh, on the typing sound. So it's pleasantly silent. I guess maybe that's why it's called the silent. We'll do an alignment test, even though I haven't really tuned this thing in a long time. Uh, see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we'll do one more on the right. You'll see again a little bit of black on the red setting. And I'll just have to tinker with that. Otherwise, uh, the typeface looks really nice. We'll finish this review with some pros and cons. Some pros include quiet typing action, it's cool black on black styling, the chrome rim to keys, and the Smith Corona durability that we all know and love. The cons, the only the cons that we could think of were the uh, ribbon adjustment Which that we need. Which you can kind of see. We got the black bleeding into the red, but we can fix that. The musty smelling case, we've tried our best, but there's still a hint of must. And also the body scratched on the front, which is kind of a bummer. But still, overall, it's a really nice looking machine and we are all very, very thankful for it. That's all for now on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, subscribe, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Bye!